Hello and welcome to another video um, of Coding Freaks. It's uh, gonna be the third part of our bicep series, um, which I wanted to create last week already, but I uh, didn't have time to. Sorry for this. Um, okay, so let me just summarize what we did uh, in the first part. Part two, which we had last time, was just about um, some more advanced stuff um, like loops. Um, where we could uh, create, um, uh, you know, arrays of things. Um, we have parameters covered to put uh, variables from outside into our bicep template. We have outputs covered. Covered. How can we, uh, after the deployment, see some values which are only available when the resources were deployed? Um, stuff like that. Mm <clears throat> we talked in the first part about some basics like for instance um, just a test bicep to create a resource group uh, to put some variables together using for example string string concatenation stuff like that already had a parameter here um, with some um, you know <coughs> attributes on the parameter to um, to ensure that the name is all um, is just 15 characters long stuff like that we have the target scope covered if you missed uh, those things be sure to uh, view the other parts of the series um, and today i want to go one step further and i want to talk about modules um, which are pretty important for bicep um, to to approach this problem let's uh, create first of all a new uh, bicep file as usual i name it my main bicep mm. Let's um, uh, let's leave the target scope for a moment because that's one of our problems. And let's say we want to deploy um, a resource group and inside of the resource group, we want to deploy a storage account in one step. That's basically our plan. Because to this point, we um, always assumed uh, that we have already a resource group. Here we assume that we have one somehow, which means that the PowerShell script had to create the resource group outside and then we deploy into it, which is not that clean because we kind of leave part of our deployment outside of the bicep. Okay, so the plan would be to deploy a resource group. So we say resource telling the bicep script, hey, we want some resource, give it a name, let's say group, and then now select our resource provider, which represents the thing we want to deploy, which comes from Azure. So in this case, we want a resource group. This is the provider and now the API version. Let's take the newest one and let's just say we need the required properties, which are name and location. So let's say sample test or whatever sample. Let's say West Europe or I used to use West Europe in a single word because I had problems uh, doing this otherwise. So however you like it. Okay, cool. Um, now he complains, yelling at us that if you want to deploy a resource group, you have to um, explicitly set the target scope. This is what he basically says. So if we go over here and say, okay, then you get the target scope. Um, and what we need is subscription and now he's happy. Cool. And we could deploy this. I just leave this step. We could deploy this without any problem it would deploy this. Okay. Now the next thing, if we have this, the next natural thing would be to say, Hey, you know what? I need a storage account now and let's select storage accounts in this version and require properties. He's complaining. So let's fill out everything. Uh, S T O D D coding freaks, whatever, just a name for the storage account. And now the problems begin, but let's assume we take just a blob storage, please. And now the, f the natural thing would be to say, you know, this thing depends on that the group was created before this. So that is kind of nice. I don't know if we covered this already. Let me see in the last part. I think so. Here the blob containers were depending on the storage account. Okay, cool. 
Now, this thing still complains. And what he's telling us is, when you have a scope subscription, you can't deploy uh, resources of type resource group because um, only the resource group scope would be valid for those uh, resources to be deployed. Now we're stuck here. We want to deploy two things which can't be mixed in one file. That's basically what he's telling us. And now you have to stick to modules. So what this means is simply you create another file and let's call it the storage bicep. <clears throat> one possibility. Let's take all of this crap and put it into the storage bicep. Now we leave depends on out of here. We're just giving it, you know, we assume kind of to explain this, that this deployment will happen in the context of a resource group, which is giving us given us from outside of this module. So this assumes somehow the storage, uh, the resource group is present. So what we can do now is take this resource group, whatever it might be, and take its location. So in this way, we can use a function re referencing the resource group. And we are telling him whatever locations this resource group is in, take its location as my location, which is not a bad idea. Okay, cool. Now, the moment we have this, we can now not stick to resource for our deployment type. We just simply have to switch to module, which is another command telling him, now comes a resource, which is defined in another file. That's basically all it is. And now we give it a name. Let's say that's our storage resource again. And he's already searching for files um, relatively to our file and telling, do you mean storage bicep? Yeah, I do. And he's saying, okay, like in the other case, what are the required properties? And now the interesting stuff is suddenly the required properties for the module are pretty simple. It needs a scope, which means give me the context in which I will be deployed. And the scope is pretty simple here. It's just the group, which means if I'm going to be deployed, I do two things. First of all, because this is my scope, I will wait for this. So you don't need to add an explicit depends on. And I think the new bicep, which is currently 1.4.1 something, uh, came out last week, I think. It's, com it's warning you, telling you you don't need to do this because it's already waiting on the group because of the scope. Okay, cool. So we leave this out. We just tell it the scope. And now this name, and this is pretty important. Now in the module, this is not the name of the resource which will be deployed to Azure. It is the name of the deployment operation, which should happen now, which could be just the same as this symbolic name here. This is called a symbolic name. And this is just the name we give it. So <clears throat> pretty interesting. Let's test it out if it works. So what we're going to do now is we create a new file and I will do it better right now or try it. Um, to be honest, I always used, as I told you last time, PowerShell scripts. Uh, now let, let me do something different and switch over to Azure CLI. Um, what I want to show you is that if you have an extension installed, the Azure CLI tools, which I have installed by Microsoft, you get IntelliSense like in the PowerShell tools for Azure CLI. The main thing here is in order to make this happen, you have to give the name a specific uh, ending, file ending, which is um, not PS1, but the Azure CLI ending. Um, that's not true. It is, uh, let me think about it, the AZ CLI. Yeah, better. As you can see, it gets, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. It gets a new logo here. Um, at this point, you can, <laughs> I left my mouse on it, cool. 
so it gets this logo. Um, this comes from another extension, which is called VS Code icons, which depending on the uh, ending will try to guess what icon you should have. It's a good ex extension to see if it works as I did right now. AZCLI is the official um, file name ending for CLI scripts. And if you have an AZCLI script, you get, um, after a second, you get Azure CLI um, IntelliSense. And um, now we can talk about how to deploy, because I did it in PowerShell last time, AZ resource group deployment. Now let's talk about how to deploy this main bicep because I want to deploy this file, which automatically will take this file by the technique technique of modules. So that's the plan. So let's see. Um, basically, I'm not sure how to do it. Let, let's find out together. It's not a bad exercise. AZ. Uh, what is it? Is it? Hmm. Is it arm? Is it no? Is it deployment? Sounds like manage Azure Resource Manager template deployments at subscription code. Sounds good. So let's find out more about AZ deployment. What's in there for me? Mm, dash H for help. Okay. Now this is interesting. Uh, what what is uh, um, what is interesting here, manage Azure, Azure Resource Manager template deployments at resource group. So that's not what we need, I think, because this assumes that you have a resource group. I, I think if I now give it the dash H here, it tells me um, that it wants, let me see, uh, create. Dash C, dash C, create a new deployment. And now let's see what he wants. AZ deployment group create uh, wants the resource group, which is required. And we can give it uh, a resource group. What about AZ deployment create? Is this a thing? It is. So it is the same um, story as with PowerShell. As you can see, the only required option in AZ deployment create is the location. And that this matches kind of what we see in PowerShell. In PowerShell, you have the command let new AZ resource group deployment, which is the other thing. And then you have new AZ, res, uh, new AZ resource deployment, I think. Resource or new AZ deployment. Yeah, new AZ deployment without anything. And this is exactly what you get here too. So AZ deployment create, and what we need is the location, which is dash L um, and which is West Europe. Um, and then it has some other options. Let me do PowerShell here because this is what I don't know for today. I'm pretty unsure. Can I execute this as a PowerShell? Uh, we will see. Um, so next thing I want to uh, specify is the name. Now, again, it gets a little bit confusing in bicep area when it gets to names, because now you have several scopes with naming in it. So the first scope is the resource name. Um, you can think of it like, like this. If you have a resource and you give it a name, that would be the actual name in Azure of that resource. Okay. If you have a module with a name, this name is like um, a, a reference inside of the deployment, not of this file later on when it gets deployed. And I show you where you see it um, for the module, which gets deployed. It's like a name for this step, if you will. Think of a module like a step in the deployment. And now this name is the name for the deployment. And what people are doing here, um, what I see and what I self do too, 
is like something like hmm, let me see uh, main for main deployment or whatever dash and then what is today today is let me see December 17th so uh, <clears throat> uh, December 17 and then 2047 for the time so you make this scenario if you want to distinguish different deployments in time later on um, we don't need to do this let me just name it block sample so that we can see it so what else can we do no wait so now we need the template file uh, and I forgot this one template dash file um, will be what file should be deployed main um, bicep and I honestly don't know if this gonna work <laughs> okay this won't work so this is okay uh, template file and now normally you would need a template parameter file for instance um, and we can do a what if or whatever and maybe we should use an F for uh, this so it's it's clearer I like this more so now all we have to do basically is um, to run this deployment and I honestly don't know what's gonna happen now um, if we have how do I run uh, this is bicep o3 um, part feed sorry and now let's see if I have deploy Azure CLI will it run no it won't it, it wants me to open the store so let's find out how to run uh, Windows run Azure AZ CLI file that's kind of interesting yeah exactly what I want to know um, I'm not aware of any to do this in power if someone knows I would like <laughs> okay bash C yeah uh, to run script from WSL would be an option or directly so you have to make it executable I think mm -hmm. put it in a sh file which is the same as putting it in a PowerShell file as far as I know so I think that was the original reason I um, gave up on this and uh, used PowerShell files um, so the the down point on this you lose everything uh, which is related to syntax highlighting now he does not know what this thing is and that's what ended me to do the following uh, new AZ deployment um, and then uh, what's going to happen is name is uh, block sample let's do it and now he's understanding what I'm doing I think uh, template uh, file would be dash main uh, let's do it ps script root uh, main dot uh, bicep what the heck is going on and what did I a location location would be West Europe so <clears throat> and to ensure that everything is okay uh, let me just get a Z Mm, context everything this is okay this is the correct context normally you would ensure somehow uh, be sure that uh, az posh context is set correctly and um, I will have a talk about some other very important things for instance not to do this thing I, I present in demo and use um, a named user which uh, performs the steps uh, but instead to use a service principle to execute the scripts which is pretty important for several reasons and if you have a service principle uh, you don't have the problem um, exposing your your credentials 
because you could some tricks, you could perform some tricks in your company, especially or in your tenant situation where you get the service principle magically out of a keyboard, stuff like that, without exposing anything in GitHub in your scripts and um, other very important stuff. But anyway, we should be able to execute this. Let's run it. And I'm not hitting verbose mode here. What I expect to happen, oh yeah, maybe not. Uh, missing template deployment fail because of policy validation. Yeah, that's interesting. Good that this happens. <laughs> so what you see now is um, he fails, and this is a very, very important uh, information. He fails because I have an Azure policy inside of my tenant which um, disallows anyone, even me, and I'm a global admin right now, I'm disallowed to um, deploy a resource group, which I'm trying to do currently without defining certain tags here. And this is what what is missing. And what I need is, I need him at least to give him a purpose in our case. And I wanted to give him coding freaks, whatever and just run it again. Let me clean the screen here. Um, for whatever reason, oh, he starts the integrated console. I don't like it. Let us uh, do it by hand and let us use main, no, deploy dot ps1. And let's see, no, oh, I don't want to restart. Um, and now another violation and he says disallowed by policy. Oh, I think it is because, oh, I was very precise in this policy, guys. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 you know what? I think there are only certain purposes allowed. Let me see if this is true. Oh, you're right. Let us do it again. Oh, this is, by the way, the wrong one. Um, now the next thing is not valid according to the tracking blah blah please refer oh yeah account property access tier is required for the request so here he says missing required account property okay cool so in the storage this sounds like something in the storage account is missing this is interesting uh, let me see uh, the access tier is in properties i think uh and yeah and let's do a cool one what what i'm what i find interesting here is and i didn't know that this is gonna happen is that the required properties macro here is not getting the required properties that's interesting by the way do it again so it's not bad that this happened normally i would get nervous and try to cut it out <laughs> of the of the recording but I won't do it um, because this is kind of your daily business in bicep, in my experience. So you get better in certain things and you, like you've seen right now in my case, you kind of know where the errors come from. Um, but you certainly are um, debugging all the time and I very, very rarely have um, a little more complex deployments where I hit it at the first point and it just runs through. It's just not happening. So that's cool. We have a succeeded deployment in West Europe. So let's check it in the Azure portal. Let me go there to the correct resource group. And it was, I think, RG, uh, what was it? What did we call it? Let me see here so I'm not noising you out. And <clears throat> um, I think RG sample is the correct resource group. Let me go there. And uh, I have it already. Let me pause for a second to install my dark mode. Let me um, let me have a second. Okay, I did it. Um, here it is. Fire Firefox in dark mode. I'm using dark reader. If you're interested in, uh, I did two things. I installed a dark reader as an extension, uh, which, by the way, I learned from John Hammond's video. Lastly, mm, live stream. Um, check it out. Be sure to check it out. It's pretty cool. And you have it for Chrome too, by the way. Dark Reader is available for, for Firefox and Chrome. And I'm used to 
open Azure in Firefox for just um, convenience reasons. But anyway, so what you see now is we are in the Dev, Dev to Test subscription and you can see uh, my mask subscription ID. I think I didn't mask it all the time. It's just, you know, some kind of fake security. You, you can connect to it, hopefully. And now you see my storage account here. You see the tags which are here, purpose and demo. And um, everything is deployed correctly. And we um, can now delete the resource group. Let me see, RG sample. I can delete the resource, or let me actually do it in the correct way. Let me do it here. And now um, uh, remove AZ resource group name is not this one is rg sample with force and i'm just doing this because when i redeploy this stuff you can be sure that um, i did it in this run so that's pretty cool um i think so now that we understand what a module can help us with you surely can understand that modules can do more even so let me introduce you to one of our projects at my company, DevDeer, which shows you where uh, those things can lead you to. So kind of a leap forward, stick to me. I hope this is interesting for you. And um, I think a lot of companies um, are doing this stuff. Um, and I'm talking about this, sorry. Um, so let me go to my repo. It is here, there, there. It's not interesting for you. So what we did, what we did is we brought this modules idea uh, one step further and said, well, you know what? Turns out that when we deploy it on a daily base, when deploy on a daily base, um, this is kind of unnerving that you rewrite the modules all the time. So not a good idea. So what we did, first of all, we created every time we needed to create something in Azure. Um, and it's not something which is uh, uh, not unique, uh, not um, not a normal resource, like let's say, uh, deployment script or whatever. Um, we create something in a central library, which is in our repository, which is this one, this is a project. And we have some samples here, which are kind of test scenarios where we use the modules here on the top just to prove that they are work. And then one step even further is if we have some resources which are um, con which are built from a lot of these modules, we can put all this together in components. This is our idea, okay? You don't have to take it. I just want to show you where this can lead you to. So for instance, if we have a virtual network to make a little bit more complex thing in Azure, and this is a very naive virtual network, but it kind of works. Uh, this virtual network takes in some options as an object. We talk about this maybe a little bit. And it now takes the allowed inbound ports that you want to be allowed on this virtual network from outside. That's all you can do currently. And if you want to have more options, we definitely have to expand this component, which comes in the form of a module. It's, it's just a module, it's a file, a bicep file. So what this does now, it uses an existing resource group. You have to have a resource group and it deploys, first of all, a network security group into this resource group. Uh, so it assumes that you don't have a firewall. This is a firewall, more or less. And it assumes that you don't have a firewall. Um, so this takes in our module, which is not, it is not a resource, as you can see. It is referencing this folder and it's going to the network here, network security group. And now this file represents how we at DevDeer, which is my company, how we would create a network security group currently. So here are a lot of things possible, like allowed and more import, additional security rules, whatever. 
and then we build here an array and bring everything together with looping which is security rules and then we build the network security group putting in the security rules by using the union function which takes two arrays security rules and additional security rules and merges them together so this is basically what you can do here and then the next resource it deploys two resources which is the diagnostic settings for this network security groups group which are only deployed if the skip diagnostics parameter which is here is not false or is true and then we deploy this which leads to kind of the wrong thing and i can omit this in the new bicep you get a warning whatever i will fix this and at the end we return the id and the output of this resource so that's our module and if for whatever reason we need to update our module we should also update our component for the vnet because the vnet component now says okay let's put the work for deploying the network security group to this module and then for a vnet we need the actual network too so now we define the network in another module the same way and in order to make all this happen and to pass our options back and forth we have wrapped this in an object um, called options and you have to know which options there are needed uh, let me see when we now need a sample and we have a vnet sample here this is a sample and what this does is it builds this option options object so this is something you have to know currently bicep does not support defining this as let's say a type an, a custom type it's not supported currently would be pretty good because if this would be possible i could say something like this in my vnet component i could say well not any object but i would need here uh, let's say def dr options object that's what i expect okay that's not possible currently uh, we wait for this maybe it comes okay um this way as you can see you start to get in the direction um, of reusable components and obviously enough we are not the only ones at devdeer at my company uh, which are approaching this um, this target because if we go to oh sorry why um to the bicep at github and i hope he gets yeah thank you he gets now so bicep at github now if you take a look here at the official bicep page and we go to the releases and i said two two days ago there were the 1124 and then we had this other release this one dot four or zero dot four ten oh eight and this brought something pretty interesting which i haven't covered yet i will and it says private module reg registry support and it says basically you can use an azure container registry <coughs> and you then can push your library of modules to this container registry and then in the bicep you can the reference the module in another way you see this here it says let me zoom in this is the way i showed you currently so this is the way doing it in the file system and now you can say you know what i want this here so my module does not come from the file system but it comes from a magic br colon url which needs you to um, pass in um, the full uh, image reference including the image tag uh, inside of your azure container registry with the with the path referencing to the module you mean 
And this way, he will download this from the registry and use it. You don't have to take care about all this stuff. What we did at uh, DevDeer is we went to NuGet. So NuGet.org, oh, I hate that this get white. People, I, I, I know it's pretty hard. I have to have, get my uh, setup straight. If you want to participate in our modules, feel free. If you search for DevD here, you see our uh, bicep templates at GitHub. Here they are in version 1.0.7. And we are constantly um, working on this. But you know what? Um, do this. <coughs> it's, it's kind of risky because we are um, we are forward about this modules and we did it our way. So this is basically, and we will put it here in the readme. I hate the readme format of, of NuGet, but anyway, the next release will bring this 1.0. Uh, 1 we'll bring some updates and the readme will be far more better and more explainable. And use it at your own risk. This is basically what I'm telling you, but you can learn. And if you have this, I can show you what you could do in a basically empty file. Let me show this to you. Um, I have some samples here. Let me just grab a little PowerShell out of my uh, PowerShells. Mm. Let me go here. Da da da. Happy searching. And what I did, basically I have two files. And let me maybe do it in another folder. This is mine. Now let me go over to the block samples again. And I won't check this in maybe, maybe I will. Let's see, new folder, demo. Let's do it here and now paste in. Uh, why, 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 why? I have two files basically. I have a git ignore and I have this install module script, which is pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, because it assumes a lot of stuff. You need NuGet uh, CLI installed on your machine. Just to give you a hint, if you want this to happen, you can use Choco. I um, uh, I love Choco, Chocolaty, which uh, gets replaced slowly by WinGet in Windows 11. But Choco, Chocolaty, to be um, to be precise, is currently the way to go, in my opinion, to have a package management under Windows. Maybe I make um, I make a cast about uh, setting up your dev box if you leave comments, and I will do it. But anyway, what I wanted to show is Choco was used at my machine to install Bicep um, in the and it updates it too, by the way, in one step. Pretty pretty interesting. And then we have what do you need? Nugget, Nugget, whatever it's uh, pronounced. And NuGet here has a package at Choco, which is called NuGet command line. So you just say Choco install NuGet.command line and it will get you all the things you need and install it and put the paths together and whatever. And the good thing now is I can just perform this operation locally. So what this brings me, uh, let me go to the demo folder. Uh, well, block samples. Oh, I'm far too deep, am I? What is going to happen? Where am I? Uh, oh, I'm too deep. Um, okay, so let's step into and let's execute install modules.ps1 and this is getting the NuGet with all the output. And now we have two folders here in your, stru in your, in your project structures, modules and components which are exactly the folders I showed you in my repository. I just give you the complete insights. It's it's not just open source, but it's visible source. You know, you just have to remember, don't touch it here um, because both of the folders are part of the git ignore because they are kind of uh, packages which are installed in my clumsy way here. And you uh, I have to do some move operation because NuGet puts it in a weird folder structure um, by default. But what you could do now is you can go here and create a new file, uh, your own main bicep file. And with the knowledge of today's lesson, you can say, you know what? 
good that I have the DevDio modules, no, or my own or whatever, I will deploy um, at subscription level. Let's do the same. I will deploy a resource group and I copy over my main bicep for this reason. Let me close some tabs. I will deploy this one and now I will use my uh, module which is uh, in modules uh, uh, storage and now I can say go to modules go to storage go to storage account and please fill in the required properties which is the scope is a resource group as we have this is a storage account and now it needs some param parameters and I will put in the parameters from um, my other project because this is something you have to know and you have to align it to your settings. Let me go there and show you the parameters real quick. Um, it is, what is it? Here in the samples, you can take it out uh, and copy it in and then by the way doing it, I can explain what I'm doing. Where is it? Here are the options. And this is basically what I have. So what I have here is I'm telling him, you know what, you need to define the location at one point, a certain suff suffix, which um, leads us to our naming convention. I'll show you this in a second. Then the stage name uh, is get lowered from the stage name which is passed in. Then we need a log analytics uh, workspace ID uh, so every resource gets hooked into log analytics, which is what we do. Uh, what is the default diagnostic name we should assign? I show you all those options. What is the default action groups for alarms, which is this one in our case. Here is where we have our central alarming in our subscription or tenant to be, to be um, precise. And now in order to, for this thing to work, it needs parameters. So let me fill in the params here. Okay, those are the params which are needed. You can do this stuff um, because we are at subscription level, obviously. So I have to leave the location here out. So now options is happy because it gets all the information it needs from outside, from the params. I show you what we do there. So now the name here of the module will be the storage module and the options I pass in are the options for the storage account. And now I just leave it this way, okay? Because I wanted to deploy a dev deer default storage account to this resource group. Okay, cool. So far so good. Last thing, we have to define some parameters and this is done uh, by a parameters file and I don't know did we cover it yeah we covered it in the first part you can take a look in the first part so what we have in the parameters file it's a JSON file and the t stage name would be test and the project name would be let's say CF for coding freaks keep it short um, and now here are all the information which I don't need those those for for example those are just filling in um, the parameters which this file needs. So and all we have to do now is we copy our deploy script. And now what we need him to additionally is the template parameter file, which is simply um, the parameters.test.json, I think, yeah this file. So let me switch this in, close all the tabs and now let's have a, a close all. The um, important files are the deployed PS1 and the main bicep and the parameters test. So the deploy PS1 will execute this or will first of all um, perform which step first? Uh, of course the bicep step. So it will perform internally without you seeing it, the bicep build command using this file. 
um, main dot bicep in the correct folder, please. CD demo um, bicep build main dot bicep. So it will perform this step invisible for you, including the warnings. And this step generates this file main JSON. And this is this is <laughs> this is the reason we talk about this all the time. This file is actually the correct implementation of an ARM template representing what I want to achieve. This freaking, I don't know, 369 lines of JSON are representing what I did basically with this file here, including the lines from my module, from the storage module. So all this together leads to 300 and whatever files and it's believe me it's far more better readable in a json in a bicep way uh, it's the same reason you or um, basically what uh, tools like terraform give you is first of all you get these um, things and terraform also is kind of agnostic to what cloud backend you use it doesn't care if it's azure or if it's AWS or whatever. So <clears throat> if this is important for you, then bicep is not for you. Okay, I, I told you that in the first part, I think. I hope so. So basically, this should work now. <laughs> That's the whole point. Uh, we got into this rebel tool that it wasn't planned to show the DFT modules. I just want to show you the purpose of modules, which I think is fair. Um, and now let's let's do this thing. And you know what? <laughs> Uh, let's crash this. I think it will crash. Basically, uh, just run deploy piece one and let's see what happens. Ah, it's crashing. <laughs> Cannot find path demo parameters test bicep. Um, is this true? Yeah, because it's JSON. Yeah. As John Hammond used to say all the time when it happens to him you probably yelled at me all the time because you saw it <laughs> now i know how he feels all the time and i don't know he will probably he will never see my tutorial oh location from template what is going on location from template oh i don't have a location uh specified in the template so that's bad um i should do it definitely so uh, I don't have a location parameter inside my um, parameters file but I demand one um, here so that what this came from so let's go ahead and add a par param definition in my file so let's add one which is called location and I'll say West Europe and let's see what I don't know is currently oh nice Europe with E so what I think I can omit then is this I don't know if this is an if this is valid can I leave it out and will he take it from the parameters file which would be good uh, no I can't I think let's put it in again and it's not cool um, so you have to, sometimes you have to live with crap like this. So now project name uh, should be greater or equal to free. Is that so, sir? Project name min length free. Min length. This is unusual. I forgot this. Uh, CF demo. Here you have. Go ahead. Let me have a sip of coffee. Because I'm not cutting a lot, you know, I'm not a fan of cutting here. Uh, I all, all also do it for wait times or stuff like that. So what's going on? Uh, the template variable options not defined, unable to evaluate template language function resource ID. Function requires fully qualified resource type of operation install mm, as one of the first three arguments of resource, blah, blah, blah. What is going on? Let me see my main bicep 
which has an options object. Yes, yes, yes. And and now he wants our first two of the resource. What? So we need a log analytics workspace name. Do we have it? We have it. Uh, we need go away. We need resource group name, which we also have. We need a workspace subscription ID, which we had. And then we have location, stage name, and project name. Location, stage name, and project name. Perfect. Now what? He needs a resource group. Cool. And now he's complaining because what? The deployment validation failed. Please see blah, blah, blah. Unable to evaluate template language function resource ID. Okay, cool. Let's step this through. Let's go here. And now it ha has to be somewhere here. Resource ID. Is that somewhere here? Or no, 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 no. Wait a second. It's here. Here, this resource ID function. This is failing. Why? The question is why? Microsoft Operational Insights Log Analytics Workspace name. And he says, function requires fully qualified resource type. Operational Insight as one of the first three arguments for resources at resource group scope or first two arguments for resource of subscription scope. Ah, I see. Now we are talking. So what now is happening, I have a target scope subscription and he tells me, you know what? The resource ID function right now, I didn't know that, by the way. The resource ID function does not allow you, obviously, to define a local analytics workspace in another subscription. What can we do now? Excellent question. So what he's telling us, maybe, um, okay, okay, okay. Local analytics ID is in another subscription. What is going on? So what if, is it because we do it differently in our things? So what is happening now? Because you can't find it. You don't know in which subscription right now, correct? You will not find the resource ID here, tell you. <clears throat> Will you? That is interesting. That is very, very interesting. Hmm. He's doing something, guys. Let's see what will happen. Honestly, let's go over and let's check what is going on. Is it the same resource group? Yeah, there's a storage account and it's happening, but it's failing, telling us that this workspace in the resource group C7, Operation Insights, LogDD, doesn't exist. I know, that's why I told you that you can find it here. But you, this, this is the moment I'm thinking of, are you sure? that this is the way to go <laughs> but guys because now now we are stuck here you know i i just wanted to show how to do it in one line and now we're stuck because of this target scope subscription this is um, a problem right now because we can put it in the same file um because here we need to reference an external resource the only exit i know here is the following you put this in you don't do this one you simply don't do it um, because you tell him, you know what? Um, storage account is happening in resource group. Tajacope is resource group. So now what we tell him is um, you have to deploy this from outside. We have to tell him where the resource group is, okay? So, because we can't create the resource group. Okay, let's take a look here in our deployment script. This means we want to do this. We have to give him the resource, an 
az resource group deployment which is something different it's exactly what i told you and giving him the resource group name which is rg sample i think and now this resource group has to exist uh, in beforehand and that's why we most of the time as you have seen for reasons like this we are creating the resource group uh, not in the template but we already have one resource group which is not the best thing to do or you have two deployments one for the resource group and then a second deployment but you know kind of sucks so let's go and deploy uh, ps1 because we can hit deployments over and over again it's not a problem um, he will do it and now let's take a look at what happens here in azure because i promised you to show you now take a look here at this uh, deployment section here it's basically something you can open and now you see that here are deployments with names the first deployment is block sample which is interesting because those names are exactly uh, what we have defined here this is the name of the deployment block sample which appears here and now we have sub deployments which are dependent from block sample and now you have one which is called storage let me zoom a little bit and storage is simply the name of the module as i told you here this is this thing defines this name and inside of storage you can see deployment details and stuff like that you can redeploy it so the deployment itself the state it, uh, it generated is now part of your resource group which is kind of neat, I think. Um, and this way, you have uh, another advantage of using bicep or ARM templates, which is um, you have releases which are visible. You know how those uh, things uh, have been created. So what is the good thing about our storage module? What does it do? First of all, it uh, takes care about naming. So I just tell, uh, told him the project name in the parameters. I'm just telling him, you know, my project is named CFDemo and it should be a test stage. So what he does is stodd uh, Spock. Why Spock? How does he know something about Spock? Where have I de defined this one? Can you tell guys here? that's what i did so can leave this out this was too much because spock is already the project name but anyway um it has different reasons so now i could go here and tell him you know what delete this guy because renaming is not an option it's not working you can't rename a resource you have to delete this so be sure to double check everything and then you simply redeploy this thing and wait for it to happen so um another deployment is happening after some time hopefully you see deploying and you can simply watch it being generated and if you have errors by the way you can go here and you have pretty much the same information as in the console but um, they look nicer because they're a little bit better formatted here so he's deploying everything again let us go to the overview and you know the portal is lying you know the resource is already there but you know the portal is caching and doing stuff like that let me do a cache re a cache re you know it's not there uh here it's already finished let me cache refresh this and you know it's lying basically it's lying now it's there okay go here this is now my correct named uh, in the context of devdia my correct name storage account and we did a lot of things here um, so well, first of all we deployed our default um, uh, storage um, behavior which is standard hot tier storage v1 uh, v2 generate um, general purpose it is automatically locally redundant storage which are all things you have to remember all the time you deploy um, storage account uh, we have blob soft delete enabled which is not enabled by default container soft delete is enabled that's why it's disabling here uh, no it is it's not enabled blob soft delete i see it should be 
enabled, by the way. Why not? I don't know. So a lot of options are not enabled. <laughs> they should be. Um, I have to check this right after the session. Good point. So the next thing, which is pretty important, is security. Is it in security? I can't remember. No, it isn't. Uh, where is it? Let me check. Uh, this is the wrong place, guys. I need something like, where is it? Uh, SSL? Is it there? I don't know. It, uh, I'm switching off that secure connections are uh, switched on. Somewhere is this configuration, I think. Yeah, it is secure transfer required is enabled. Allow public is enabled too, because this is a default we use. Account key access, yes. No version 1.2 TLS hot and so on. So and then we also have those diagnostic settings which are not so simple to deploy in the terms of storage account. And all those settings are pointing to one central lock analytics workspace. And the guy who deploys the stuff doesn't even have to know about all this. All I have to now check is, and I have to do it in a DevOps way in my repository, why the heck are those are disabled, soft delete, because it's pretty, oh, I know why, because of the costs and um, the effects. Yeah, I know. Um, so I should enable, uh, should have an option to enable it. Maybe I have, and I just didn't see it. Let us see what this thing allows us to do, you see. This has options here, and I because I provided parameters. And is soft delete, uh, soft delete here? No, it isn't. So I have to definitely add an option for enable soft delete, and I don't have it because you know all the storage accounts are pretty complex, and we don't use it in in default. Okay, guys. So um, I will not share this basically because I think it's kind of a commercial for the dev tier. Um, uh, library which I don't want to have here. It's it's not. I'm not saying use the DFT library. I'm just saying do your own stuff here and maybe use this Azure Container Registry related stuff. Uh, hit me in the comments if you want to have more information here, um, and I will react to this. Um, the the main reason showing you this is I'm considering those minimalistic bicep templates are pretty uh, as pretty good maintainable. They show us that defining our infrastructure can be pretty simple and pretty spell um, pretty precise without all the noise which comes with ARM templates, which is pretty annoying. Um, and uh, that's what I wanted to show you uh, using modules. Next time I want to talk about even deeper stuff. Um, I think next time we call we talk about some um, things like resources which are not so easy to deploy. I will, I think I will take a logic app. I don't know, uh, Azure logic app, if you know what it is. And what I mean by not easy to deploy is that some resources need to inject, need you to inject stuff like, I don't know, um, uh, JSON definitions, uh, which are not pretty good maintainable because they need to be one liners and stuff like that. I will talk about those ed edge cases. And then I think I will talk about in the part after this about inline scripting in bicep templates. So, which is basically a bad idea, but sometimes you can't come around, um, or, or you can't achieve your goal without scripts. And it's possible, but I don't know if it's good. I show you what I learned there, but for today, that's it. Give me a feedback. Um, love to see you next time. Have a nice day.